So thank you so much for joining us, everyone, today for our Better Than GPS tour. We're going to get started at 6.03. And in the meantime, please feel free to check us out on our social medias, which is at First Year Eng on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and follow us for the latest updates. Cool. So let's just begin by introducing ourselves. So hi, everyone. My name is Eliza. My pronouns are she or her. And I am the first year ambassador lead with the first year engineering office. And I'm going into my third year of biomedical engineering. And hi, everyone. My name is Simran. My pronouns are she and her. And I'm this year's orientation lead with the first year engineering office. And I'm going into my fourth year of aerospace engineering. We wanted to start out with a land acknowledgement. We are doing a land acknowledgement to show respect for the Indigenous peoples and recognize that we as settlers are here on their land. So Toronto is in the Dish with One Spoon territory. The Dish with One Spoon is a treaty between the Anishabe, Mississaugas, and Haudenosaunee that bound them to share the territory and protect the land. Subsequent Indigenous nations and peoples, Europeans, and all newcomers have been invited into this treaty in the spirit of peace, friendship, and respect. And before we begin with the agenda, please take some time to respond to this Menti question. Head over to menti.com and type in the code you see on your screen. Cool, so we have people joining from Toronto, and then we have people joining from India, Scarborough, Mississauga. I'm from Scarborough. Um, we have people joining from Ohio, that's so cool. Kenya, Marco. Columbus. Nice. We have people joining us from everywhere. It's pretty cool. New Brunswick. So I see majority of um, the attendees are from Toronto in Canada. Cool. All right. So thank you everyone for participating in that really quick mentee uh, poll. So for the agenda for today, we're actually going to be starting off with giving you an introduction of the first year engineering office. And after that point, we will be splitting, splitting you off into breakout rooms. And inside your breakout rooms, the FYEs will be giving you a tour of all the buildings as well as resources available on campus, uh, along with some of their experiences. And then this section of the event will take about 50 minutes. And then after the tours, we'll be joining back in the main room for a 10 minute rest presentation. Uh, which will be followed by a panel discussion where the FYAs will take some time to answer some of the frequently asked questions. And then we will be ending the day off with some of your questions. All right, so firstly, let's talk about the first year engineering office and the different services and support that they provide. So the first, the office actually consists of a team of professionals dedicated to supporting you throughout your first year until you're promoted into your second year. They offer support in three main categories, academic, administrative, and transition. And if you have any general inquiries, the first year engineering office actually hosts drop-in uh, virtual advising room sessions throughout the week. And a team of staff is actually on hand and ready to answer any of the questions that you may have on, on the spot. So if you have any questions about your courses, your liberals, deadline dates, or anything else, be sure to stop by. They'll answer your questions or connect you to the right departments. Uh, and virtual advising is actually hosted Monday to Friday from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. and then 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. via Zoom. And for more information, you can also visit us on our website at ryerson.ca slash FYEL. Okay, and now we are going to be splitting you off into your breakout rooms, so please be sure to remain on mute unless you have a question. Hi everyone, today we are going to start off with talking about the George Vare Engineering Building. This building consists of five floors and we are starting at the lower ground, which has lots of labs used by aerospace and civil engineering students. Moving up to the first floor, you have the Department of Aerospace Engineering. Here you will find general lecture halls and aerospace computer labs. The second floor consists of computer science labs, which is used by the first year engineering students and CPS 125, which is your digital computation and programming course. In first year, you will have some courses that are hosted by the Department of Computer Science and the Department of Mathematics, and you can locate the offices on the second floor of the engineering building. Eng 340A is where you will find the first year engineering office. Currently, they're hosting virtual advising sessions Monday to Friday from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. and then 1 to 3 p.m. The meeting ID can also be found on our website. The first year engineering office, or FYO, consists of support in academic advising, transition support, and administrative support. The office of the dean is also on the third floor. The office is here to ensure the highest quality of excellence in all areas for the Faculty of Engineering. 
um, and is achieved by serving the needs of the whole student, including everything outside the lab as well as in the, inside the classroom. The Dean of FIAS, or Faculty of Engineering and Architectural Science, is Dr. Thomas Duver. Um, and lastly, the electrical labs are also on the third floor. The fourth floor has the Department of Electrical, Computer and Biomedical Engineering, and Computer Labs. The engineering building has the Ryerson Urban Farm, which consists of a rooftop garden. The produce that is grown is sold at Ryerson farmers markets and local restaurants used in school cafeterias and donated to the Good Food Center. The rooftop also has three beehives. Next, we have the Sheldon and Tracy Levi Student Center, more commonly known as the SLC. And it is one of the newer bu buildings on campus and each floor has a different theme to meet the different study needs for, and styles for students. All the furniture in the SLC was selected by Ryerson Interior Design students. The Blinds are programmed to respond to solar radiation levels and temperature. Also, the design on the glass is called the is called FRIT and F R I T and is copyrighted by Ryerson. It is used to prevent birds from flying into the windows, and it also has a reflective surface that helps with overall efficiency. And now we're going to dive into some of the individual floors of the SLC and see what resources they have to offer. The Digital Media Experience Lab, or the DME, is located on the third floor of the SLC. This lab hosts many drop-in workshops and tutorials throughout the year that teaches students how to use emerging technology and digital media, such as 3D printers, MATLAB, virtual reality, and Photoshop and Illustrator. Also on the third floor is something called the Launch, Do Launch Zone by DMZ, also known as the Sandbox. The DMZ helps emerging entrepreneurs to refine their business ideas and develop the skills necessary to build a strong foundation needed to build a competitive business. It is a startup incubator, provides access to multiple creative, digital, and entrepreneurial skills. During the COVID-19 pandemic, the DMZ is looking for entrepreneurs to join the DMZ's incubator, and you can submit an application on their website. Moving up to the fourth floor, you get to the student learning support, also called as SLS. Um, here you will find a group of services and programs aimed at helping students engage more effectively in their academic studies. They teach essential academic skills and study techniques through student learning groups, pre-tutoring sessions for all common first year engineering courses. Also, there is a, the math center, writing, writing support, academic accommodation support, and um, the academic accommodation support is also offered for students living with disabilities looking for help with their academic accommodations. Incoming students that require academic accommodation support are recommended to register as soon as they can um, and as soon as they accept their offer. The Ryerson Bookstore is where students can buy textbooks, school supplies, and Ryerson swag. The bookstore carries all first-year engineering textbooks. However, it is highly recommended that you wait until the first week of classes to purchase your books. The reason for this is because during the first week of class, professors will tell their students what textbook and edition they need for the course, as well as if there is a course code that needs to be purchased in addition to the book. That can be used to access online modules. For ebooks and online access codes, you can have, head over to their website. Next, we have the Student Campus Center, also known as the SEC, which is located right next to the Oakham House. So Oakham House is a building with some of rooms for events, and it also has the Oakham Cafe, which offers all-day breakfast and lunch and daily specials. We also have the multi-faith room, which is located on the third floor. It has a quiet atmosphere for prayer, worship, meditation, and other spiritual and faith-based activities on a drop-in basis as well as room hours are posted on the door. This building is across, from, across the road from the Kerr Hall South building. Okay. And now we have the Ryerson Student Union, which is also known as the RSU. It's created to empower students and build a community here at the Ryerson campus by advocating for student rights and supporting student groups, events, and initiatives. As a full-time student, you are covered on the, under the RSU Health and Dental Plan, all students are automatically charged $323 for coverage throughout the 2020-2021 academic year. If students have alternative coverage, they can opt out by October 4th, 2020 and receive the $323 as a credit on the RAMS account. When students opt out, the opt out status is carried forward throughout the following years, so you only need to do it once. The insurance provider is Green Shield Canada and more information on this plan can be found on the website. 
Next, we have the library building where you can find many study spaces and computers throughout the building as well as different study rooms that you can book out throughout the year. Um, there is also the laptop loan program as well as wireless printing service paid for using your one card. You can also find many textbooks at the library as well as RULA, which is an online database which gives you access to many online uh, virtual course readings, citation guides, and so much more. Uh, you can also find more information by visiting the link on the screen. As well, the library building is connected to SLC, Podium, and Kerr Hall, so you will never have to walk outside if you don't want to. Next to the library building, we have the Podium building, which is where you are going to find the service hub. The service hub is the one-stop shop for all questions about submissions and pickup documents, student financial assistance, RAMS support, tuition fees, and more. The Service Hub Ambassadors will reply to emails Monday to Friday from 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and reply to phone calls Monday to Friday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can request help by clicking the Service Help form link on the slide here. And to find the answers to commonly asked questions, you can head over to askryerson.ca. Right. And also in the podium building, you have the Hub Cafe, which is where you can buy food and pay for it using your one card. The Ryerson Farmer's Market is located outside the Hub Cafe, and Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m., you can purchase produce from the Ryerson Urban Farm, which is the rooftop garden on the engineering building. Next, we have the Career Center, which is also located on the ground floor of the Podium Building. Um, they offer many programs focused on empowering and encouraging students to maximize their potential at Ryerson. These services include career advising, LinkedIn advising, resume and cover letter advising, as well as services are available to all Ryerson students up until five years after gradu graduation. And all the services have been shifted online and appointments can be booked through the link on this slide. Okay, and now moving on to the tri-mentoring program. So this program offers mentorship opportunities to all Ryerson students to help find their sense of belonging on campus. So first year students are matched with upper year students in the same program or with similar interests to help incoming students successfully transition into their first year at Ryerson. This office is located in the podium building in room 54. Ryerson has multiple ways to ensure you are staying healthy and well. Mental health is just as important as your physical health, and we are going to go over some services covered and ways you can ask, access them online. Firstly, we have the Center for Student Development and Counseling offers. So this offers free confidential counseling services in a professional and friendly environment. They have moved virtual, so you can reach them through the email that is linked in the slide below, or you can visit their website. Next, we have Wellbeing at Work. This is composed of a number of resources designed to help Ryerson employees find their personal and professional lives. Creating that separation is very important and being sure that you are practicing safe working from home um, protocols is very important as well. Um, next, we will be moving on to the Kerr Hall building. So in Kerr Hall East, you will find the Ryerson Engineering Student Society, also known as RAS. Uh, their office is located in Kerr Hall East. Um, it's a, RAS is a student-run organization that aims to provide services to all engineering students at Ryerson. Um, it is an umbrella group for more than 40 organizations that include design teams, chapter organizations, course unions, and interest groups. Uh, they are also responsible for FRASH that runs from August 31st to September 4th. And like I mentioned, they are located in Kerr Hall East, so their office is located at KHE123. Next, we have Kerr Hall South, which has the Department of Chemical Engineering, as well as the first year physics labs. Next is Kerr Hall West. This is where you will find common engineering com computation labs. And the upper gym is also here. The upper gym is used for intramural sports, and this also hosts as an exam room during finals. The Medical Center is also located in Kerr Hall West. The Medical Center provides quality health services to current students and employees at Ryerson. You can access it using your one card and using OHIP or UHIP. They have moved virtual and you can book appointments using that email and for more information, head over to their website. The Office for Consent Come First is also located in Kerr Hall West. It is Kerr Hall West 279. They provide support for the Ryerson community members affected by sexual violence. You can head over uh, to their website for more information or you can contact them using the email linked below. 
Okay, so lastly, we have Kerr Hall North. Um, we're in the basement. There is an engineering design zone, more commonly known as the dungeon, where a lot of design teams are located. Uh, just a fun fact, but Kerr Hall is one of the oldest buildings at Ryerson and is comprised of four buildings, making a square. Okay, and lastly, in the center of Kerr Hall, we have the Ryerson Community Park, which is more commonly known as the Quad. In front of Kerr Hall South, you will find the entrance to the Ryerson Recreation and Athletic Center, which is also known as the Rack, and they host lots of fun ac athletic activities for you to partake in. The Quad is the best green space on campus, and it's definitely very relaxing there. Okay, so welcome back, everyone, and we hope you enjoyed your tours. And now, if you would like, you can take a quick break and stretch out your arms and your legs. We know it can get tiring sitting here for quite some time. And we have Steven here today, who is the rest president for the 2020-2021 school year. And he will be giving us more information on rest and what it is that they do. I'll be introducing myself in just a moment, but I am from the Ryerson Engineering Student Society, which is the society that's gonna be representing all of you in your first year at Ryerson. Just a little bit about ourselves. We were founded in 1988, so that was quite a long time ago, even before I was born. We represent nearly 4,500 full-time Ryerson undergraduate engineering students and we aim to provide uh, co-curricular programming throughout the year. So we do that through hosting events, uh, whether it be social or career readiness, and we also have uh, academic support in collaboration sometimes with the FYIO. We raise awareness for charitable causes. So just recently we have our annual bug push where we push a uh, Volkswagen Beetle across the Ryerson quad for 24 hours straight. Unfortunately, this year it was canceled due to COVID-19, but we did it online and we were able to raise over $7,000 for the Sick Kids Charity Foundation. And we also, again, like I said, focus on career preparation uh, through industry nights and resume workshops. So basically the gist of it is that we're with you from orientation, which is coming up in about a month, all the way to your iron ring ceremony. Just a little bit about what I'm gonna go through today. I'll be covering student leadership, the community and resources you can expect to find from Ryerson Engineering Student Society. A little bit about me. This was actually my campaign photo when I ran for president. Uh, my name is Steven. I'm my fourth year mechanical engineering, fourth-ish year. Can I say that because I'm actually my fifth year. I am the rest president for the 2020-2021 year, and I was the VP academic last year. After I graduate, I hope to take over my family company by using my engineering degree to grow the business. And all my spare time, I play basketball, play guitar, and I love food, so I go grab dinner with my friends when I can. Unfortunately, I can't really do that now, but I still try to when I'm free. So let's jump right into it. So student leadership, how can you get involved? So RES is not only a student society, we're also a hub for all the engineering student groups across campus. So we have nearly 50 student groups that are under the umbrella right now. And when I say that they're under the umbrella, we provide them resources that they need to succeed, whether it be funding, whether it be promotion, whether it be sponsorship help, we give them a lot of tools to help them out. And our student groups, in my opinion, are my pride and joy. Um, they're great. They do a lot of great events throughout the year. And um, for example, the Ryerson Rams robotics team is placed second in the world right now, currently in their, in their competitions. The Ryerson formula team always competes competitively every single year. This year, they're actually gonna be transitioning to an electric, all electric car. It's gonna be the first time they do it. It's gonna be a great time. We also have special interest groups, such as Engineers Without Borders, who send off, uh, similar if you correct me if I'm wrong, but a junior fellow every year to study abroad and to work abroad to help out with engineering, um, engineering projects across the, girl, across the world. We also have course unions, which are discipline specific. So whether it be MECQ, which is a mechanical uh, industrial engineering course union um, that helps you out with discipline specific matters. And they also provide cool merchandise throughout the year for you to show off and wear. Student groups operate all year long. It's not like they stop in September or start in September and end in August. They run all year long. And if you wanna get involved now, you can. And if you want to contact them, you can visit rest.ca forward slash directory and you'll be able to filter out uh, what kind of student groups you want to see. So whether it be design teams or course unions or student groups uh, in general and by discipline as well. So if you're in aerospace, you can find an aerospace uh, student group and so on. Student groups are a great way to get involved in your first year. Just because you're in first year doesn't mean that you can't get involved. It's never too early to get started. And it's also a great thing to have in your resume, especially if you're a graduate from Ryerson. Ryerson places an extraordinary amount of emphasis on experiential learning, which means learning outside the classroom. Um, so if you have this on your resume, be able to uh, show off your communication skills, your team building skills, and just conflict management in general. 
And from the REST side, we have something called the First Year Engineering Board. The First Year Engineering Board is a unique five incoming first year students who get the opportunity to experience a role on the REST Board of Directors. So for those of you who don't know, the REST Board of Directors is made up of approximately 16 people, 22 if you count non-voting members. And the five students who actually get to be on the FYB are one from each discipline. I'm sorry, one from each department. And your job is to inform, engage, and connect. So what that means is that you're gonna let your first, years, first year students know what's going on across campus. You're gonna be planning events to engage with your fellow classmates and in collaboration with the FYO. And you get to find out all the problems they're facing and relay it back to me and to the team. I'll be posting my contact information later on in the, in the slides if you wanna contact me and find out more about this. It's a great opportunity. Everyone that does it every year enjoys it from what I've heard. Um, it's a lot of fun, it's low commitment, so it's not really that serious, but at the same time, you get to have a little bit of a taste of what the REST life is like. The Ryange community. And so you're gonna be seeing this diamond quite a bit throughout your four years at Ryerson. Uh, it means a lot to us, it means a lot to the Ryerson community as a whole. Um, and I'll explain a little bit more about that later on. So the Ryerson, the Ryerson engineering community, better known as the Right Eng community, is envied by everyone at Ryerson. And you'll get to know that once you get the chance to be back on campus, there's a real sense of culture within the engineering community. And we also have long standing traditions, which you'll find out more about in orientation week. But when I say we have a sense of culture at Ryerson, what I mean is that everyone is there to help each other succeed. So if you go to other universities, I'm not gonna name names, but U of T, Western Waterloo, those people, um, you're going to see that everyone's very competitive and not everyone's there to help each other. At Ryerson, it's very different. We're the only engineering school that's in the heart of a big city. You can walk down Young Street, Dundas Street, two minutes, and you get to have lunch in the Eden Center, or you get to have class in the movie theater. Um, these aren't some things that you're going to be experiencing in September, but luckily you're going to be here for the next four or five years. Um, so you will experience it eventually. This is a picture from last orientation week. Um, this is on the Tuesday of orientation week where we take a march down to Center Island. If you don't know what this building is, um, I blame the FYAs for giving you a bad tour. I'm joking, but this is the Ted Rogers School of Management building. Um, so what this is, is that Ryan's diamond that I showed you earlier, every year we go there and we just place stickers all over the building, um, all from the outside. And there's approximately like 300 students doing this every time. You can see Raheem Rahman is actually holding a sticker up right now. So this sticker gets placed across all of downtown. So you actually walk around in a huge parade. Uh, you get the sticker, anything and everything that's on a government building or a bank. Um, and just a lot of fun. Again, great sense of community and long standing conditions such as this one. Resources. So you can think of REST as a massive resource bank. Our website basically contains everything that you're gonna need for the next four years. Um, we offer a lot of different services. So in collaboration with the FYO, we also have academic tutorials, which are crash courses essentially, um, just before midterms, just before finals. FYO will be taking care of it throughout September to uh, basically the first semester. And then the second semester, we'll be covering the discipline, discipline specific courses, tongue twister there, um, to help you get prepared for midterms and finals because it can be a little bit hard, especially in your first year. Something new this year that we're gonna be offering is something called certification aid. It's not finalized yet, but since everyone is sitting at home, not really doing anything, we wanna have people a little bit motivated to be doing something on their spare time. So we're actually gonna be reimbursing part of your certificate that you buy online. Say for example, if you do a certification course that costs $100, we'll be able to cover up to $50 of that course, which basically gets you half off of what the course actually might be provide uh, a lot of different workshops and technical workshops skills that are going to be very useful for you in your uh, in your resume and your career readiness and we also give you a lot of social events so we have events on halloween we have events on valentine's day um, the holiday bash which is an annual christmas event that we have every year we just have a lot of different events and a lot of different services that are going to keep you running throughout the year and hopefully help you out throughout your time at ryerson the biggest one that i would say though is called ready I'm gonna play just a short teaser of what this is gonna sound like. It's not really anything much, but just something small for y'all to see. So what is Ready? Ready is the Ryerson Engineering Digital Initiative. It's gonna be a hub that's designed to help you navigate your time at Ryerson since orientation is gonna be online this year. 
It's going to help you discover Ryerson Engineering in a completely online environment. So it's very contactless, very safe, very efficient. It's the first time that anyone across the country tries to pull anything off like this, uh, especially in engineering. There's going to be videos, interactive content, resources, blog posts, live webinars. Uh, Amir is actually going to be doing a podcast that's going to be on this ready platform. Um, and it's going to be a special keynote, keynote from the REST team. So ready is going to be a way to show off Ryerson Engineering to the best of our ability anyway online. Um, you're going to find all your resources there that you're going to need in first year. It's going to be updated constantly, almost weekly, as a matter of fact. Um, and basically anything that you're going to need in first year is going to be on this hub. So you can connect with us. We do have an Instagram page that's buzzing all the time. We post stories almost every day or every two days. Uh, it's called at Ryerson Engineer. And we also have a Facebook group that houses everyone at Ryerson Engineering. And you can look it up on Facebook. It's called Ryeng. If you don't have Facebook, I know most first years coming in the last couple of years don't. I'd recommend you, I highly recommend that you get it. Um, you're going to be in group chats with all your fellow classmates. You're going to be seeing posts from myself, from the FYO on Facebook. Um, it's a great way to get connected with your fellow peers and a great way to keep in touch. If you want to connect with me personally, there's my Instagram, uh, Stephen Ibrahim. And if you want to email me, if you have any specific questions about the presentation or anything from Ryerson Engineering, you can email me at prez at rest.ca. And that's the end of my presentation. Thank you. I know some of you said you wanted to have a, a quick Q&A for me. Yeah, so if you have any questions for Steven, you can just go ahead and type them out in the chat feature and he will gladly answer them for you. I see uh, a question here from, Sh I'm gonna botch this name, I'm gonna try my best, Cheyenne. How are clubs gonna work online? I just answered it pretty well. Yeah, it's gonna be a bunch of virtual events, nothing really concrete yet. Uh, I know they are pushing to do more events online and to figure out how they're gonna navigate online. Um, I'm going to be meeting with them to discuss ready and hopefully that gives them a better understanding of how they can run things online. Uh, any tips from any tips on what you can do during the summer to help prepare for your first year. Uh, go join the FYO mini math course and all the mini courses that they have running. Um, that's my best advice, but my, my bestest advice is to just enjoy the summer to the best you, the best you can. Um, this is going to be the last summer where you're really going to be stress free. It's a, a great way to de-stress and uh, get ready for the first series to enjoy it as much as you can. For mechanical engineering, what laptop would you recommend? Um, doesn't really matter what laptop you get. You have the labs in the computer rooms that are, are accessible 24 seven for you. Um, in my opinion, get something light, get something that you can uh, travel with easily. You don't want something heavy. Uh, so anything like that depends on your budget is as well. And for mech -eng, what co-op options are out there? Um, you have an optional 12 or 16 month internship uh, that's offered after your third year. If you want information on that, you can Google FIAS, uh, FIAS internship and you'll be able to get more information for it. All right. Thank you so much, Steven. So thank you for that presentation. We're going to move on to our panel discussion. So our first panel question is, what is one piece of advice that you would give yourself on the first day of university? Alexis, can you start us off? Sure. Um, thank you for that question. Um, so one piece of advice that I would give to myself on the first day of university would be to take a moment to breathe. So your first day of university can get very overwhelming because you're in a new environment. Um, you're surrounded by a ton of new people. Um, so it's really easy to get caught up in the like hustle and bustle of university life and of being um, in downtown Toronto. So I think it's okay to take a moment to um, relax and catch your breath. Um, and even with online classes um, in the fall semester, I think it's okay to still take a break because you might be um, overwhelmed with the amount of information that you're receiving. So yeah, that's my piece of advice. Thank you so much, Alexis. Yeah, it's definitely very important to take breaks. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're at home, if you're at school, wherever you are. Um, it's a very, very important point. And now let's move on to Daniel. Hi, yeah, thanks for the question. So yeah, I guess the one piece of advice that I would give myself um, is to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. I think um, one of the biggest things like coming into university, especially from high school, like things are going to change a lot. Um, and especially like, especially with uh, COVID and everything, like things are, are differing and things are becoming online. Um, so I think getting comfortable with being uncomfortable is such an amazing piece of advice for me, whether that's even not afraid to asking your profs questions, um, challenge yourself by joining student organizations, uh, projects and committees, 
um, this is something that kind of helped me to challenge myself and honestly make the best out of my Ryerson uh, engineering experience. Um, and honestly, like, if I didn't challenge myself, uh, if I didn't like have this like men first year, especially like I didn't really have this mentality and I was kind of always like, um, like, oh, I, I want to do what's comfortable for me. But um, I honestly found that once I challenged myself more, I, I got to meet so many new people and um, really enjoyed my experience more. Thank you so much for that answer, Daniel. It's, I think it's personally very important to make sure you're pushing yourself out of your comfort zone because you will do things that you didn't think you were able to do. And that's a very surprising and good feeling to have. Um, yeah, so let's move on to question two. Uh, did getting involved in extracurriculars change how you manage your time? Ramja, can you answer this for us? Yeah, thank you for the question. Uh, so yes, I would definitely say that once I got involved in extracurriculars, I learned to manage my time a lot better than before uh, because I would juggle a lot of group meetings, studying on my own, uh, going to class, and then also keeping time for myself because that is really important. Uh, one technique that I did use was trying to be like fully present in what I was doing. So say for example, I was studying, I would put my phone away for like, you know, about a rating from like 30, 45 minutes depending, and then I would take breaks. And then in between those like 10, 15 minute breaks, I would be on my phone, but Whatever I was doing, I would always try and be like fully immersed, like fully focused in it. Um, as well, if I was in a meeting or a discussion with others, I would try to be like really present and I would kind of put my phone away so I would have like less distraction. Yeah, thank you so much for that answer, Grandja. Phones can be the biggest distraction ever. They're fun, but you need to know when to put them away uh, for sure. And Nathan, would you like to provide some insight on this as well? Uh, sure, yeah. Um, so, I mean, for me, I definitely getting involved uh, changed my time management um, at least a bit. I mean, like however we're spending our time is definitely going to impact your time management. So when you're getting involved more, you're definitely going to have to get used to that. Um, but at least for me, the way I found it at the beginning of the year when I wasn't as involved is I had that free time, but it's not like I was putting it towards good use. So getting involved is not as daunting of a thing as it might seem. Um, I think, um, like, I get a lot out of uh, extracurriculars. Uh, I haven't necessarily gotten involved uh, with campus clubs or design teams as much as I'd like to, and it's definitely something I'd like to uh, get back to while we're on campus. Um, but it's totally beneficial to have fun in university, and I think getting involved in extracurriculars is the best way to do it. Okay, thank you so much for that, Nate. And now we're going to move on to question number three. Uh, what was one of the biggest challenges you had to overcome when transitioning to university life and how did you overcome it? And Daniel, can you answer this? Yeah, for sure. Um, so one of the biggest things that I struggled with, um, and I, I believe like everyone, every FYA can, can kind of vouch for this too, is basically how to manage your time. Um, in high school, I was kind of that one student who did absolutely everything that I saw that came in my path. Uh, whether that was student body, uh, I was part of like two different bands. I did every sport at school. Um, like school was never really like uh, like academics was never really a factor that I that really stopped me from pursuing other passions. Uh, but once university hit, that dynamic for me completely changed, and I found myself like studying more uh, for school, and I lost basically all my passion because I couldn't uh, spend any other time doing other stuff that I liked other than studying for my classes and doing well on my exams. Uh, but that's where exactly where like the time management really comes in. I think that's one of the, uh, the things that I struggled with first year uh, and not being able to manage my time because um, again, like I mentioned earlier, like once I started getting involved then my schedule became um, more manageable and I was able to plan out my day more. I was able to make more out of my experience uh, as a Ryerson engineer and make use of, uh, of all the amazing clubs and extracurriculars uh, that are available. And um, this doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen like the first day after school, you come back home and all of a sudden you have a perfect schedule. For me, it took almost both semesters of first year to actually figure out things that worked for me, um, like small things here and there that worked for me to um, really help to optimize my schedule for myself and give me more time to kind of, I guess, relax and uh, spend time with friends, meet new people, as well as uh, maintain my academics. So um, if you're struggling with time management your first week and you're really stressing out, please don't worry. Like you are like gonna be in the same boat as maybe like 90% of your other peers. So uh, it just takes some time to realize um, uh, what works for you. 
Yeah, thank you so much, Daniel. And I cannot put enough emphasis on something that might work for somebody else will might not work for you. So don't get scared or, you know, like if something's not working for you, that's working for your friends, be sure to find something that works for you. You are your own unique person and everybody has different learning strategies. So please keep that in mind. And uh, Santiago, can you also answer this for us? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, so for me, one of the biggest challenges on, in, when transitioning was learning how to deal with all the responsibility that came from going to university. I was, I was basically responsible for myself and that's a big change uh, when you're responsible for everything that you do and the consequences will be your responsibility too. So that was a big change for me. I learned how to deal with having responsibilities and I learned how to balance myself and know when to step back and take some time to relax as well as when to put myself out there or when to give myself out to studying and everything. So. It was, that was my biggest challenge. Hey, thank you so much, Santiago. Responsibility is a very, very big thing in university. So please keep that in mind. And lastly, let's hear from Alexis. So I'm gonna go over two of the biggest challenges that I faced in my first year. Um, so the first one being, I used to be really shy before starting university, um, but I quickly realized I sort of needed to break out of my shell um, and try to be more outgoing to meet other people within engineering at Ryerson, um, since I didn't know anyone from my high school that was going to Ryerson for engineering. Um, so the way I overcame this is I started talking to more people, um, and then I soon realized that everyone was kind of in the same boat. Um, everyone was in a new environment, everyone was surrounded by um, new faces, so that made me feel a lot better. Um, and then the second challenge that I faced, similar to Daniel's, um, is time management. Um, and this is a challenge that I still face going into my fifth year. Um, so specifically in my first year, I found it really challenging to keep up with how quickly things move in terms of academics. Um, because um, when you get to university, things move really quickly um, as opposed to high school. Um, and I found that really hard to get used to. So to help overcome this, I learned the importance of creating a schedule and sticking to this. Um, so to help, I use my Google Calendar a lot, um, as well as an agenda. So yeah. Thank you so much, Alexis. And let's move on to question number four. Uh, how did you transition to being fully independent when it comes to managing your own time and staying organized? Uh, let's hear from Amir. So it was, a, I had a lot of difficulty when it came to time management, um, but I got a lot of help from my academic advisor, Dr. Amley. Um, she's also the prof for CN100, and she's one of the sweetest people on campus. And um, also got a lot of help from SLS, student learning support to stay on top of my all, stuff, all of my stuff in my first year. All right. Thank you so much, Amir. Those resources are very important. And as you saw in your tours, SLS is still offering support online. So please feel free to book appointments with them for any support you may need. And as always, the FYEO is here to support you in academically and also help with the transition and uh, administrative work as well. And now let's hear from Nathan. Uh, sure. Thank you. Um, so, I mean, I don't know. Independence is a great skill set to have. I guess I, I, I think that it's extremely useful, but we also are, you know, hopefully in, in a place where we do have support systems built up for us already, um, you know, be it family or friends or whatever you have in your life. Um, but we have kind of extensive uh, support staff at Ryerson on top of your family and friends, um, you know, from the FYEO, from the first year engineering office. And I think we should be using those to the best of our abilities. And I really implore you to get out there and try and you know remain independent but also use those support systems you have yeah for sure thank you so much nate um we can't put enough emphasis on it's okay to ask for help don't be scared of it um you're not nothing's wrong if you need help everybody needs help once in a while so use the support that is there don't be shy of it and now question number five how has being part of an online community helped you throughout your time at ryerson Harvey, can you share your experience with us? Uh, so being part of an online community, um, it helped me in my time at Ryerson because um, it just helped me a lot like with um, having just more time for everything else. Like I had more time to do things that I um, 
wasted maybe commuting or like um waking up really early like now i have time to actually wake up um not three hours before a lecture like i can wake up five minutes before my lecture and um, i'm good to go um and then another thing is um i have more time to just do things like even like activities or go for a walk or something like that that i i really didn't have time for that um when i was commuting because my commute was really long um, and another thing is uh, I learned how to stay organized because I was a very, very messy person. Um, but when you're being home, when you're forced to study at home all the time, um, I actually always maintain a clean room now and a clean study space. Um, so that has helped me a lot. Okay, thank you so much, Marvi. Uh, and Raman, can you share your experience with us? Yeah, of course. So for me, the online engineering community helped me a lot just because most of the community, when I think of the community, I think of like the group chats that were made. So the Facebook group chat and the WhatsApp group chats. And so they helped a lot with like helping me figure out when my deadlines were for assignments or for tests or like when, what homework we have to do. And cause it was mostly other first year engineering students as well. And so everyone was just sort of helping each other out, just being like, oh guys, make sure you, you guys submit quiz one for this class, like before this time. So it, just, it helped me organize myself as well as it gave me an opportunity to help others in case they needed some assistance. And even when it came to homework problems, that was a big help because in case I didn't know any, uh, any answer to the question or I messed up my solution, there was always people there to help me. It's like I would send my solution, they could be like, oh, hey, you messed up on this line, maybe try it again. And so the other students really helped when it came to the online community. And it's definitely an amazing resource to take advantage of. Yeah, thank you so much, Roman. And uh, please be sure to follow us on Facebook and like our page. That's where you will be engaging with all these other students and get all the information that you need from us. And lastly, let's hear from Amir. So for me personally, one of the bigger, biggest fears I have is the fear of loneliness. And, you know, unfortunately, during the current global situation and the pandemic, it's like the reality for a lot of people, millions of people that you can't really connect with other people. But being part of an online community is with people who have built connections with is kind of like a remedy to my loneliness because they're just only with a click of a button away. And it's really comforting knowing that the community isn't going anywhere and it's always for me whenever I need them. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much, Amir. We're here to support you. So please do not be scared of it. And uh, now we're going to move on to our final question. And what is one work from home tip you recommend? Ayush, can you share your tips with us? Yeah. So um, one work from home tip I'd recommend is like, remember the phrase, a cluttered space is a cluttered mind, because if you have a cluttered space, that is what will keep you busy rather than the, than, than the lecture or tutorial or lab going on, going on. So like keep your space clutter free. I wouldn't say keep like clutter free in the sense, like organized, not not like scrub, like scrub it clean, definitely, but like keep it organized, like, like keep it neat, keep it tidy. It helps out, helps out a lot. Uh, one more thing I found, uh, what keeps me grounded and keeps me in check is having, a, uh, I have a Mac, uh, so I have a FaceTime tab open with my friends who are currently doing the course and who are currently in the lecture to mimic that lecture experience for me because they help me keep, they, they keep me in check and I keep them in check. So that keeps the university mindset going for me for a work from, for a work from home challenge. So that's, that's something I'd recommend. Great. Thank you so much, Ayush. Just because we can't be sitting beside each other in lectures anymore doesn't mean we can't, we can't be there for each other like this. So it's uh, very, very important. And uh, now let's hear from Raman. Yeah, so I completely agree with what you said. Keeping a clean work environment is an amazing thing. Um, it's just, it, gives, it keeps your mind clear and like you don't have, it keeps your mind uh, focused on what you're working on. So me personally, I like to, I fiddle with things a lot. So I'll either be like twisting a pen in my hands or something like that. So keeping those things away, it keeps you focused on what you're doing in class. And instead of like having your mind wander to whatever's on your desk. Um, another thing I really recommend is having a designated workspace that isn't your bed. So because working on your bed is more like a comfortable spot, you're gonna end up getting lazy, get tired, and tend to not focus as much. So like me, I have a small little desk set up in my room, which is just enough for my laptop and some papers. And with that, it's like, it's a proper work area where I know if I'm sitting here, I have to get work done. Whereas if you're in your bed, you're gonna be like, oh, maybe I can take a little nap for a little bit and then come back to it. 
So just having a designated spot is an amazing thing to have from working at home. Yeah, and thank you so much, Roman. These are all very, very important tips and tricks that would be useful once it does come to, uh, in September. Or if you're taking the mini course now, it's also a great way to test out what work from home tips work for you. And that concludes our panel discussion. Thank you everyone for your answers.